Hi there, Dr. Dave here with another TI-84 Plus tutorial. In this tutorial I want to look at uh, using the uh, graphics calculator to do quadratic iteration. So we've got a question here from a previous exam paper. Uh, we've got quadratic iteration uh, going from z goes to z squared plus c. The initial value of z is 0 and the value of the constant c is 0 0.3 plus 0.5i. So what we want to do is use the graphics calculator to calculate the first few iterations of this particular quadratic iteration. So, start off with, I'll, I'll do this in a stepwise approach using the calculator, and then I'll show you how we could generalise this approach and actually write a program that will do this automatically for us. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to put initialize a variable z, so we're going to store the value 0 in this variable z, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then perform this first step of the iteration. So to do that we go z squared plus this value c, so 0.3 plus 0.5i and I'm going to then store this updated value in the variable z. Oops, I do that. There we go. And the very first value, the value for z1, will be 0.3 plus 0.5i. Now, I could go back over there, repeat that step. So the second value, which would write into there, would be 0.14 plus 0.8i. Continuing on. Now I've got the third value. Backtracking, repeating. This gives us the fourth value which if I want to actually see the value more precisely I can do it like this and so forth and we continue that process uh, let's just get rid of this stuff here continue that process until that gives us a fifth value I think from memory and then lastly sixth value. And we can write it in there as we go along. Okay, so that's one particular way we can do it. And that's going to be a lot easier than having to retype all of this information in each step. Uh, so we can simply put that down there and it gives us a fair degree of precision. Another way we can do, to save us time and be able to deal with these sort of questions more generally, is to write a program. So let's have a look at one I've actually written earlier. So we go in and, and walk through the program. So first I've just called it iterate. Uh, it prompts for the value of z. So this is the value of the initial value of z. And it also prompts for the constant c. So I've set this up in such a way that we can both change the constant, uh, sorry, the initial value of z and the constant value there. So for this particular case, we just put in z equals 0 and c equals 0.3 plus 0.5i. Next step it does down here is it clears the list because we're actually going to store the values in three lists as I'll show in a moment. Next step is we set up a loop. In this case I just loop from 1 to 6 to fill in these values but we could even generalize this further and ask for the number of iteration steps, maybe call n, and use that as an input to the program as well. So we'd have an extra prompt value here. Here we do the iteration step, so we go z squared plus c is, is stored in z. We then display the value of z, and then what I do is I then store the value of z in the list, first list, list 1, with the index of i, which remember i goes from 1 to 6. Next step, I store the real part of z in the second list, in list 2, and I store the imaginary part of z in list 3, which is going to make it easier for me to read off those values. Okay, so let's see how this works in practice. So again, exit out of there. Oops. And call program. And this time I'm going to execute iterate. So I just do that. So this is asking us to input the value of z. So remember the initial value of z is 0. And the initial value of of c is 0.3 plus 
plus 0.5i. Press enter, and it goes through and does. If we go back up here. Oh, well, it's killed off the display, but it's actually shown the first six values of Z. Now, again, not not the best way to display it. So what I've actually done is set off stored it in a in a list, in three lists in fact. So the first list shows the uh, Z1, Z2, Z3, and so on. The second part shows the real parts of Z1, real part of Z, uh, sorry, and then the imaginary part of Z1, real part of Z2 imaginary part of Z2 and so forth. So we can then, if I want to work out the imaginary part for Z6, I can then click on this particular value on the list. So it gives us a much easier way of sort of going through and looking at those different values. Alrighty, hopefully this is helpful. Uh, feel free to copy over the code. So maybe we'll just go quickly back over to there, displaying the code again. So feel free to copy that and use it as you see fit, modify it if you need to. So as I said, one modification would be to change this to a variable as well. Okay, just let me quickly click down. Alrighty, hopefully that's been helpful, and I'll catch you next time.